Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome to a new series of videos on microprocessors or CPUs, uh, central processing units, all the same thing. Uh, what this video series is about is learning the basics of principles of how a CPU works. Uh, there are a few type of CPUs. This series will cover a simple, unpractical CPU, but a CPU nonetheless. Uh, further series I have planned include covering ARM and RISC processors. But for now, we'll start with the basics from the logic gate level. Uh, this video series, we will build a microprocessor from logic schematics. And the schematics come from this book that teaches about computers through the perspective of logic. Um, I picked up this book during uh, my bachelor's degree. Uh, to learn some basics of computers that I haven't learned yet. And to my surprise, it's filled with logic schematics, which is perfect for a digital design nut like me. Uh, it's a great book. I learned a lot, some stuff I already knew, but some stuff was refresher. Uh, here's the table of contents so you can kind of get an idea of what this book covers. Um, what we'll do is we'll build each component of the CPU uh, and describe it in Verilog HDL. And then at the end, we'll connect all the stuff together into one processor module. Um, we'll test each module individually, and then we'll verify the operation of the entire processor using a universal verification methodology or UVM. And then once we're done with that, we'll put it on an FPGA and use it somehow. So let's get into it. This is the series overview, so part one, in this video, I'll cover the memory unit. Next video, arithmetic and logic unit, clocks and stepper, control unit, instruction set. Then the entire microprocessor will be done. Then we'll test it using UVM in Vivado. Uh, and then we'll put it on an FPGA implementation. Here is the block diagram for the entire processor. You can uh, see all the parts of it here. We got the RAM over here, which is the main memory, which is what I'll be covering today. Control section, we have general purpose registers up here. We have an instruction register, an instruction address, address register, the ALU over here on the left, an accumulator for the ALU result, some other temporary registers. You can see all the control signals. Here's the op signal or the op code from the control to the ALU. Here's the flags register for um, conditional jumping and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's get into the memory unit on part one. We will start with a single bit of memory. Um, you can see at the top here, this is essentially a latch, right? Um, with four NAND gates. So I is your the bit you want to store in memory, and O is the output bit. And if you have S signal high and you toggle i o will follow whatever the input is right and if you have s off you can toggle i all you want but o will stay at the last signal at the last um value of i before s was turned off right so this is essentially a latch and we have one bit of memory and this is the symbol for it down here now we can, over here on the left, we can put eight of those memory bits together and create this byte right here. That's what this B, this is the symbol for a byte of memory. And now over here on the right, we have what is called an enabler. In a second, we'll put the B and the E together. But just so you can see what the enabler looks like, it's just a bunch of AND gates with an enable signal that allows the, the I to propagate through to the O. And now, like I said, we'll put B and E together. Here's the uh, set signal for the byte of memory, the enable signal for the enabler. And over here on the right, we get what's called a register. We have eight bits or a byte that gets inputted. We use the S signal to set that value into the register. And we use the E signal to allow that value in the register out onto the data bus. And these are all just different symbols for what's going on up here. Um, just to make it smaller and more concise, you'll see these kind of symbols. But they're all, all these down here at the bottom are all the same thing. You, you have your register, you have your input output bus, your set, and your enable signal. 
Now we need to talk about decoder. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before. I've done I've done a couple of videos on this a while back, but simple three to eight decoder, right? Um, you have your three your control inputs, your three control inputs, and then depending on the combination, like it has over here, you'll have one output on at a single time. And now what we do is we'll take registers and decoders and create this on the left over here, which is our memory unit. And you can see this register right here is used as an address register. We have eight bits for the address or a byte of address. This SA signal is, is stands for set address. So what we'll do is we'll present the address here to the register. We'll latch it in with this SA signal. Then the top nibble or top four bits of the address will go to this four by 16 decoder to uh, energize or activate only one of these vertical lines. The lower nibble will come over to this decoder and activate only one of the horizontal lines. So the one horizontal line and one vertical line, wherever they meet, um, this is a blow up over here on the right of one of the intersections. And you have one register, one byte of memory at each intersection. So this is a 256 byte memory, right? 16 by 16 is 256. You see we got our data bus down here our set signal and our enable signal. So essentially we set the address to choose which memory location, which part of the grid of the memory we want to select. And then if we're setting it, we're having data driven onto the bus from somewhere else in the unit, uh, in the processor, in the system, somewhere else, there's gonna be data driven onto this bus and we'll toggle the set bit high to latch it into our data. Now, if we want to enable data coming out, so that's essentially a store instruction, right? We're storing data into a memory location. Now, if we want to load, um, like a load instruction from a, a processor, we're loading from memory onto the data bus. Um, the data bus will be Z'd by, you know, or floated so that we can enable one of the memory locations to drive data onto the bus to leave the memory unit. Now this is an example of uh, 64K RAM. It's the, kind of the same setup, just a lot larger uh, decoders. And we have two address registers here. Um, and you can kind of see from this, this is just an example. We're not using this, but I'll, I'll go over it. Like this takes two clock cycles to address, right? Because we only have one 8-bit address bus. And so we, we present the byte here, we latch it into RO with the signal S0. Then on the next clock cycle, we'll present another address and we'll latch that into R1. And now we have one vertical line and one horizontal line lit. But this is the RAM we're gonna be using for this processor. It's a 256 byte RAM. This is the symbol for it. And this is another, this is a, a simpler, smaller symbol. We have our A, which is our address, our SA, which is our set address and the memory address register. That's what MAR is, memory address register. Then we have our input output bus, our set signal to um, store information and our enable signal to load from RAM. Now let's go over the Verilog module test bench and simulate. Okay. Here is the RAM I created. Now, I'm not going to uh, do this uh, memory with just logic gates. That would be insane. That would just take too much logic gates. But thankfully, Verilog has um, RTL, register transfer language, that we can use to easily create uh, the 256 byte RAM just in this little bit of code for the module right here. Uh, let me go through. We have our inputs. We have our eight bits of the address, the memory address, the set address signal, the set data in memory signal, the S, the E signal for enabling data out of the memory. And then here's the eight bits of our data bus, which is, take note, it is an in out because we have data coming into memory and we have data going out. Uh, right here, we need the, uh, this is the MAR, the memory address register. It's just the 8-bit register. And then here's how we create the RAM in Verilog. So we're going to create a memory. It's essentially a register where 
each location is 8 bits or a byte of memory and we have 256 memory addresses 0 to 255 and now down here is how we um, work with the memory so always at star if which means basically if any time a signal in the module changes if it's if that signal is SA and it's a 1 then we're trying to set the address register, right? So we're gonna take A, the value of A that comes in on the input, and we're gonna set it into the address register. Now for the data, if it's S, we wanna set, if S is equal to one, we're trying to set data from the bus into the memory register. And this is just like, this is an index, right? We're gonna use the address, whatever the address is, we're gonna use it as an index for the memory register, and then we're gonna set the data that's on the bus into that memory register. And now for the output, if we have an E, we're going, we want to enable data out from memory. So we're gonna drive the bus whenever we have E from the data that is um, in the memory that is being indexed at this data address. Otherwise, we wanna float the line because somewhere else in the system is trying to drive data into the memory. Uh, here's the uh, test bench I created for it. We just uh, got the signals named the same. I've got a bus reg um, to drive the in out. In this case, the bus reg will be used to drive data into the RAM. And then the bus wire is what will um, have data. Well, it's, it's essentially the bus that's going to be driven by the bus reg or by data inside a register of a memory. And then I'm using Icarus Verilog to test this. Well, here's the instantiated module, right? The RAM, this is the device under test. I'm using the name convention here, just plugging all of the signals I made here, making sure to have the same bit, width, bit widths from previously. Here's an integer I for a for loop. And okay, let me cover this right here. So the bus wire, right, that's coming in or out right here. This is an in out bidirectional. So if we have a S, that means we're trying to set data into the RAM through this on this bus wire. So we want it to equal the value of the bus reg that we are going to set down here in our test simulation. Otherwise, we want it to be Z so that the, at the register inside of the RAM can drive data out of the RAM when we have the E signal lit. Hope that makes sense. Uh, I'm using Icarus Verilog, like I said, so I need these two um, system, and it's been a while, system directives, dump file. This means I'm. this is the name of the dump file I want to dump all my variables to. And dump vars, uh, I want to, what this means right here is this, this is your hierarchy. So I want to dump all the variables to this dump file from RAM TV, RAM TB, this module on down. If I were to change this to a one, then I would only be dumping the variables from this module, which is the next one down in the hierarchy. But I want the test bench and the device under test modules. That's why the zero is there. Okay, now we get into the simulation. So first I want to initialize all the register values so we don't see a bunch of red everywhere. It's good to initialize your registers. So we're going to start everything off at zeros. Uh, and then I'm just going to use a for loop to, it says load RAM with values, but it's really storing all the values in the RAM. Load and store get kind of confusing, but we're loading RAM with values. And the values I'm going to load is I plus one. So whatever I is, I is going to start at zero. So we're going to start at address zero. And then we're going to latch that address value into the memory address register by toggling SA high, set address high, and then taking it low. So now the address of whatever I is is now latched into the memory address register. Now I'm going to take the bus reg and assign it. I'm just going to add plus one to whatever I is. So the first address zero is going to get the value of one. And then I'm going to toggle the set bit high and then low so that we'll set the value of the bus reg into the memory address that we define right here. And then for 
it'll go through all memory locations 256 so 0 to 255 when that for loops done we'll come down and we'll go back through we'll start at address 0 and we will set the address register again for the address we want and then we will just toggle the e bit to enable whatever data is in memory at that address out onto the data bus and then we'll finish okay let me run the simulation and i'll show you gtk wave okay if you're not familiar with icarus fairlog i did cover it in an earlier video i think the i squared c with the temperature sensor but i'll put another link in the description for icarus verilog and gtk wave um, it is a, a simple way to simulate your verilog modules from you know like uh like you just saw from my notepad plus plus right but this is the uh command you would want to give you would type iverlog dash o in your command line or powershell whatever you got iverlog dash o this name right here rem is arbitrary name that you're going to put right here to v vvp so this can pretty much be anything uh, and then the the modules you want to include in the simulation i've got ram.v ram underscore tb for testbench.v if you get any errors you'll see that i didn't get any errors so i can go ahead and use the vvp command with this arbitrary uh, word i put right here and then it'll run the simulation and it'll tell you once the uh, dump file is open for output then you type in the gtk wave command the ram.vcd which is the name that i specified in the test bench i don't know if you remember under the dump file uh, system directive okay now let me show you gtk wave okay once you run those commands and everything come pops up fine you'll get this window right here um, i know that whatever i'm pointing at with my mouse is not exactly lined up on your view i don't know why it does that but you need to click on this plus up here and expose the device under test you click on it and you get your signals down here we'll highlight all of these signals and we will insert them into the waves window over here we will select this icon to bring it into view do some here we go now let me change some values we'll use decimal format so it's easier to see but here we go let me bring it all the way to the left and so here we go here's our simulation we're starting off at address zero right this address register is red right here simply because it doesn't begin with a value until we drive it with this set address signal right this set address signal right here when it goes high it's setting the address register with the address that's on the address bus and now it has a value and the red goes away but so we see the sa signal we are setting address zero and now the bus you can see here we are setting one into right address plus one into each address you can see here we got address one we're setting two address two we're setting three and each time that this s signal goes high is when we're setting the value into the location in ram at the address right so that works all the way out here we got 35 and 36 let me scroll all the way over to when we stop the first four loops should be around what 255 right okay there it is 255 and now if we add one to 255 there's only eight bits so it rolls over we got value of zero in the last address and now we are going to start here uh reading out of the address right so we're going to start again at address zero we're going to use the set address signal to latch that into the address register and then this time we're going to toggle the e signal to enable the data that's in that address out onto the address bus and that's what we're doing here so essentially we're you know now we're reading out all of the data that was put in and you can see it works all the way down so now we know that we have a ram and it's working we've simulated it um, and this concludes part one in the next video in part two i'll cover the alu thanks for watching